Please go ahead. All yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Guillermo, for all the activity that you have doing as an organizer. And it's a pleasure to introduce uh, or to present Rafael Potri uh, as an inviting lecture on, on the MCA. He's a professor at uh, the University de la Republica, Universidad de la Republica in Uruguay. Um, he recently had been uh, Lauren T, or whatever, he got the prize of the Umalca Prize for all his contribution to dynamical system and in particular on focus on partial hyperbolicity. And I think that he will present an overview of what's going on in partial hyperbolicity and what is expected and it's an honor uh, to be here and presenting him. I'm trying to be a chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you Enrique. So it's it's also uh, an honor to be presented by Enrique, who, whose work is, is uh, quite a bit um, a motivation of what I will discuss. I also like uh, to, to emphasize on the, the importance of uh, these meetings that uh, showing very strong and, and with uh, countries with a lot of resources and Latin America that and where there's a big gap on the resources and these kind of things allow to, to join communities and, and help uh, build agendas. And okay, so I, I will, my, the, the goal of my talk is to present uh, some work on partial hyperbolicity, but first I, I would like to, to, to introduce uh, some questions and some problems that uh, relate uh, dynamics with topology and, and to, to explain what's the purpose of, of what we are going to study. And, uh, and it's a, a very uh, broad uh, talk. I, I won't enter into many details, but I hope it, it can be useful to understand what are the objects that we, we want to study. So the, 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 the subject of the talk is smooth dynamics, which is the, the study of uh, asymptotic behavior uh, of points in a, in a smooth manifold by a diffeomorphism. So the, the, the category we are working on is the, the category of smooth manifolds. And we use the fact that the dynamics we are looking at are diffeomorphisms. And the, the intention is to try to describe the behavior of points after uh, applying the, the diffeomorphism F many times. Okay, And the, the main goal or question that, that we pursue, or at least one of the main goals, is to describe most orbits of most dynamical systems. And, and of course, these two most are uh, need some uh, precise definition uh, and depending on which definition we choose is what kind of uh, approach we take. And there are several approaches to, to attack this, uh, this kind of problem. And mainly the, the, the two ones I, I will focus on are either we, we start making some assumptions because of course not every diffeomorphism will have the same asymptotic behavior. And so we can try to, to divide the space of all dynamical systems according to some uh, conditions that they may verify. And sometimes to try to describe the size of these, uh, these systems. And in particular, if we can take one system and perturb it to belong to some class. So let me make some uh, rough drawings. So if, if we look here, is the space of dynamical systems. So this uh, would be the space of diffeomorphisms of a manifold. And here we have the manifold. And so what we want to do is you, we take one diffeomorphism here and we want to understand how, 
how the diffeomorphism moves at a given point here. And as I was saying, so there are two approaches. Either we, we start to divide this space by some by asking some properties, and we say, okay, let's study the, the diffeomorphism that have certain properties. And then we try to show whether we can describe most dynamical systems in some sense. But so this, these are the, the main approaches to, to this problem. But one main difficulty that, that uh, arises when, uh, when taking this approach is that in, in many cases, it's very hard to check the assumptions that we are making, for instance. So, so just to say some words, so the, there are assumptions like non-uniform hyperbolicity or uh, elliptic behavior or whatever. And, and it's, sometimes it's very hard if you are given a system, a dynamical system, to check whether these assumptions are met or not. And, and even if we, we are able to describe most dynamical systems, whenever we are given a, a, a system that may come from other problem or other uh, uh, subject, we we are we typically have a, a lot of difficulties in in checking whether this system verifies or not the, the assumptions. So it's a, it's a an important goal to try to be able to say uh, some get some relevant information from other, from knowing something uh, very static about some dynamical system. If you are given an equation, whether you can say or not something about its dynamical behavior. And so this is, of course, very broad as a problem. And I will concentrate in a, in a very specific class of dynamical systems, which I, I will try to motivate. And I will specify also in very low dimensions, because in, in this case, we can formulate some very precise questions. And, and also we can attack these questions. And, and of course, uh, the, the low dimensionality is something that is very helpful in order to, to look for links and to understand the, the to, to get information from the topology and the geometry of the manifold to, to put it in the dynamics. But then it's also useful to even formulate questions in other dimensions and to, and to Try, try to look for, for general uh, statements that may hold or may not. So, okay, the, 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 the type of dynamical systems I will be interested in is partially hyperbolic dynamics. Okay, I, I'm not even defining it. So, of course, this come to generalize another class of dynamics that was very widely studied and very well understood uh, which is called of hyperbolic dynamics, but it's it's uh, wider and so it it contains more examples, and that's uh, why we study. And as it's a, it's a condition of an, on a dynamical system that can be read looking at the derivative of the system, and so this is where the smooth dynamics comes into play. So we we make use of the derivative to to understand the dynamics of of a given map. And essentially what this condition says is that, of course, if you take a, a diffeomorphism and you look at a point, you look at the derivative and uh, probably in, very, very often the, the derivative in some charts will be diagonalizable. And the, the idea is that you will get charts, global charts in the manifold where the dynamics is kind of diagonalizable. Okay, the, and, and the, the specific, condition is that you have the, the tangent bundle, it's, it's split into three, one uh, three bundles. So this is uh, not in, a, in any, any dimension. And in each bundle, you have some property. For instance, in the stable direction, which is this one, you know that vectors get contracted. And also in the unstable direction, which is this one, you get that vectors are expanded. And you also know that vectors in the middle bundle are dominated, and this is here, this, this condition here, by the, the, what happens in the stable and the unstable direction. Okay, so this is kind of a technical condition. The, the drawing 
you need to see something like this. So the, the blue vector gets expanded by the derivative, the red vector gets contracted, and whatever happens in the orange vector is intermediate to these two. But this doesn't mean that this is, remains uh, constant or it can grow or, it, uh, or decrease in, in both cases can happen. Okay, so why is this a meaningful definition? Okay, so the, this is the, the technical definition. It kind of says that the dynamics is diagonalizable or at least splits into some bundles at every point. But the, the very interesting thing about this uh, definition, which may not be obvious from, from how it's defined, is that it's an open property and it can be detected with finitely many iterates. Okay, so the, the, just by looking at, at course um, action of the derivative is enough to detect this property. That's uh, something that's called confidence. And, and this tells you that whatever you study, then you will, you will, if you want to understand most dynamical system, you will need to deal with this class of dynamical system. It's also implied by several robust dynamical behavior, which is also something that we wish to understand because whatever phenomena we, we, we can observe in, in, in practice by, by running experiments on some dynamical system, will have some explanation related to this kind of uh, partial hyperbolism. Of course, it's also meaningful because we can say stuff about these systems and, and it, because there are many relevant examples, both from the mathematical point of view, but also from, from other places and in particular from other areas of mathematics too, okay? Okay, and so from now on, I will restrict to low dimensions, as I say, it's uh, because uh, it, it produces uh, interactions that are uh, significant and because it can uh, it allows us to understand better this class of systems. And I will restrict to the class, cl uh, class of uh, closed tree manifolds on which the topology is very rich, okay? And, and the reason is essentially because the kind of questions I will, I will try to address are well understood in dimension one and two, okay? So it's, the, it's really the smallest dimension where studying partially hyperbolic system makes sense. Okay, it's, it's not that they, they, there are very interesting questions and open questions in lower dimensions, but the, the kind of questions I, I'm interested in uh, become non-trivial here. And so that's, that's the, the case where I, I would concentrate. And in fact, I will further restrict to a, to a class of uh, three manifolds which is the class of hyperbolic tree manifolds, which means it's a, it's a closed tree manifold which admits a metric of uh, negative curvature. And this, these tree manifolds are, are very rich. There are many examples of hyperbolic tree manifolds. They appear in, also in several uh, fields within mathematics. And the, but the, the real reason I will restrict to this is because, uh, well, the, the, there are easy to state results if I make this assumption. And I, it allows me to take some historical shortcuts and go to the point. Okay, so that I, this means that I will neglect a lot of theory, which is very interesting in, in other three manifolds, but I, hopefully it will allow me to go to the point uh, more directly. Okay, and the, the two results I want to discuss are the following. The, and both are, are shown with uh, Sergio Fenley. The first one is that if a hyperbolic tree manifold admits a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, then it admits an anosov flow. Okay, so here I'm, I'm giving a, a, a fast definition of anosov flow. I will discuss this a little bit more later, but this, has to be thought of as a, as a topological abstraction result. So hyperbolic tree manifolds are a class of tree manifolds. They, they admit partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms. Some of them admit uh, anosov flows, 
which, which is a, um, can be thought of as a subclass of partially hyperbolic systems. And the, the, the study of anosov flows in hyperbolic tree manifolds has certain progress. And there are hyperbolic tree manifolds which are known to admit anosov flows and other ones which are known not to admit them. And so this theorem is telling you, OK, if you want to construct a partial, if you, if you have a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism in a hyperbolic tree manifold, then there must be an anosov flow. So not every hyperbolic tree manifold can admit a partially hyperbolic system. And OK, this, this is a consequence of another result that describes the relationship between this system and, and some anosov flow in the, in the manifold. And, and, but this, this is just a, a, a topological result, if you want. It's not, uh, it's not really a dynamical result. It's uh, telling you something about if you, if you admit a certain dynamics, then you, you have certain topological or geometric properties. And the second theorem is more, it's a, it's a result with, which is really in the spirit of the, of the first thing I, I said. So if you have a volume preserving partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism in a closed hyperbolic tree manifold, then it is ergodic. Okay, so the, let me make a lot of emphasis in the following things. So as I said, being partially hyperbolic is something you can check by looking at only finitely many iterates of f. Volume preservation, so the fact that you preserve a volume form is something that depends only on looking at the determinant of the derivative, which is also the, something that you can check in only one iterate. And the, and the, the topology of the manifold is also a, a static information. It only depends on the first iterate. And this result is giving you a, a dynamical implication, how these uh, conditions that you can check in finitely many iterates have implications for the asymptotic behavior and then in fact, it's something stronger than ergodic than, than, than one can get. It's a, a mixing, which means that the, the asymptotically, the, the dynamics makes independence. So you, you don't know where you come from by knowing where you are, okay? So, sorry, one question, Rafael. Yes. Uh, related to theorem A and theorem B that maybe you can put together. When you say that, is an anosso flow. Uh, we know that there are different type of anosso flows. So those one that they are just suspension of a hyperbolic or anosso diffeomorphisms, or the classical one is the Taiwan map of a geodesic flow yes. with certain properties. Uh, can you say something else about which type of anosso flow you will get in the situation of theorem A? Well, the thing is, okay, so the, in, the, in the situation of theorem A, the thing is, whenever you have an anosov flow, you have a partially hyperbolic system. So uh, knowing that, so th this is uh, certainly a, an if and only if, okay? So whatever anosov flow you have in a hyperbolic tree manifold will provide uh, a partially hyperbolic system. And, and there is a lot of information. And, and I, I will comment on that, uh, on the fact that the, the nice thing about hyperbolic tree manifolds is that differently from the case of uh, geodesic flows or suspensions where the manifold restricts a lot of the kind of anosov flow you may have mm -hmm. in hyperbolic manifolds, you can have the same manifold admitting very different anosov flows. So in, a, in principle, it tells you there are many different types of partially hyperbolic systems in your manifold. And it's not easy if you start with a partially hyperbolic system to which one of them you, you have to compare it with. So that, that is, a, is a, but okay, and, and thanks uh, for stopping. I think this is, is a good moment also to, to open up for questions if, if uh, anyone has more questions. I think I didn't fully answer your question, but I think I will answer more uh, in, in, the, in the next uh, part. But uh, I, if someone has any question, I think it's a, it's a good moment to, to make a pause and, and ask. 
So if anybody has any question, if not, I will make another question. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, because when you say this mixing, now we know that uh, suspension with the constant time are only ergodic, but they are not, they are, but they are not uh, mixing. So for okay. instance, uh, you are saying a little bit more about the type of anosal flow that you are going, you're having in your manifold. Yes, so the, the there is some, hidden information here. So that this, this, these two theorems have a very different taste and look very different. This is very geometric and this is looks more analytic because you, you, the, it's telling you a property about a measure in the manifold or whatever. But of course, here I'm hiding a lot. The fact that the, there is a program to understand ergodicity of partial hyperbolic diffeomorphisms and, and, and things. And this decomposes the problem of understanding the, the mixing properties of, of uh, volume preserving systems in some very uh, uh, analytic problem and some very geometric problem, which is this, the understanding of the stable and unstable foliations and how they look like. So essentially, this, this result uh, is, uh, is the, the, the only non-trivial thing that there are this result builds up in many other results. And the, the non-trivial thing to show here is that you can go from any point to any point by going through stable and unstable money. Okay, and, and, and this has something to do with the, the fact that in hyperbolic manifolds, and also flows are not suspension. So it, uh, it has to do with your question, but uh, it's, I'm, I'm hiding uh, some stuff. Mm -hmm. So if, if uh, maybe you can say something about, well, in the first one, you say uh, you have different type, as you say before, different type of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. There are different total animals. Yes. And you were saying that from the topological property of being a hyperbolic three manifold, you are going to this car certain cases or you are going to force certain structure in a way that is going to be an anosal flow okay that that's it the, yeah the, the the main point is that if i i will start with a a, a structure which is partially a hyperbolicity of a diffeomorphism which gives me the 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 conditions that are given these conditions okay and from these conditions i need to build a, a stronger structure which is the structure of an anosov flow. Uh, I will explain, I, I, I didn't enter yet into what an anosov flow is. Maybe I, I will do that uh, right now. But uh, so the, the point is to, uh, it's kind of uh, a, a rigidity statement. We are getting uh, stronger uh, consequences of, of uh, an a priori weaker uh, structure. So we, we need to build more structure from the partially hyperbolic structure. Okay, they, they, here I'm saying, the, okay, the, the, in other three manifolds, there are results of, of similar taste. Uh, the, the proofs vary a lot because they, they have a lot of input on the, on the topology and the geometry of the manifolds, but the, and the statements also are different, so the, it, it's it's really a shortcut to restrict to hyperbolic manifolds, but it, it's not really the, the the correct way to do so. But uh, it, for 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 this talk, I think it it helps me go into the point. So and before going, uh, this is a kind of general question. So nowadays we know which are all the possible three manifolds. Uh, you can list you now whether it is generalization, yes. conjecture, and the resolve hyperbolic. Yes. Uh, so you have a list. Yes. And you already have some result that say, well, uh, we not this result, but the previous one. And, and, I, and I, by now, I am not, I am advertising your results. So, so you show in another uh, geometries when it's possible or not to have partially hyperbolic. 
are we close to be in a situation that uh, provided all the possible geometries in dimension three to say which one could admit a partially hyperbolic and which one could not admit and what they admit one are the uh, are or certain kind of partially hyperbolic as you are showing in your, in your result. Okay, so so right now, so the, there is, of course, as you say, the, the geometrization conjecture. And from the point of view of partial hyperbolicity, right now we can, we can uh, fully answer the question of uh, which manifolds admit and do not and stuff for the, the basic geometries. But the, the geometrization conjecture says that any three manifold can be cut into pieces, uh -huh. each of which has one of these geometries. And, and for the manifolds which are cut into pieces, I would say that we are not really close to, to understand the full picture. So you are, you are saying that you are close to the elementary ones. The elementary, the elementary ones, I would say that, that, that it's, it's okay, we understand now. Okay. But, but for the pieces, when you need to glue pieces, we, we know some, some things, but I wouldn't say we are close to, to, to finish because there, there are uh, true challenges. Uh, so uh, I as I say here, so the results depend really strongly on the, on the geometry and topology of the manifolds. And right now we, we cannot, so it's, it's not incremental. It's a, each manifold has a different strategy right now. There are some ideas that can be used, but it's not that one result makes the previous one obsolete or something. It's like uh, different uh, things and, and yeah. It, and right now I, I believe it, it, it has to be like this. I, I, I'm not, uh, but of course there, there are progress and, and, and there are things to, to say. I think this, in this case, it's easier to state because mm -hmm. it's uh, easier to understand. But Thank so, you. so the, the, the rest, what I will try to, to do is to concentrate on theorem A and maybe at the end I can say something about theorem B and to, and to discuss a little bit uh, which are the main difficulties and, the, and what's, what's the problem, what's, what's needed to be done in this, uh, to get a result like this and, and why it's not obvious or whatever. And so the first thing I, I need to, to explain is what an Anosov flow is, okay? So the, the result I, I wish to, to, to talk about is that the, the fact that uh, having a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism in a hyperbolic tree manifold implies that you have an Anosov flow. Okay, and the, the, as I said, by, by definition, the, the, the converse is obvious. Uh, okay, so what is an Anosov flow? An Anosov flow is, is as I said, it's a, it's a flow whose time one map is the center direction. But the fact that it's a flow, it's a lot of information because it's telling you that the tangent bundle splits into three bundles, but one of these bundles is, the, is the, the derivative of the flow because this is trivially invariant by the time one map. And the vectors here need to be the center vectors because they, they are not contracted or expanded by the, the dynamics. Okay, and, and whenever you have a flow like this, it's a, it's a it's classical result that these two bundles, which are stable and unstable, the, the contracted and expanded bundles, integrate uniquely into foliations. Okay, and this is a very classical theory, and it's uh, it holds also for, for partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. But when you have an Anosov flow, the fact that the center direction integrates is in, is immediate because the the it's just the uh, orbits of the flow. But this may fail and, and in fact fails for several partially hyperbolic systems. So the, the center direction, even if in dimension three, so I, I, this direction is one dimensional, this means that you have curves tangent to this bundle by, by Peano existence theorem, but the regularity is, is really bad and you cannot ensure that this integrates into a foliation. And so that's the, the first uh, difficulty is that 
the, for partially hyperbolic systems, you do not have affiliation to work with. So, so you, you are lacking some structure when if you want to construct an anoso flow. Okay, so anoso flows naturally carry co-dimension one foliations, and it, there's a lot of theory about this. And, and going back also to, to Enrique's question, so there's a lot of study about anoso flows, but all that this study makes makes a lot of use on the fact that they carry co-dimension one foliations and also on, on other properties of an flow. For instance, that every leaf is fixed and then the dynamics in the center is, is constant. So in the impartially hyperbolic situation, there may not be a co-dimension one foliation. The curves tangent to the center may merge. But of course, there's, it still makes sense to study the curves tangent to the center direction and try to, and the, the, the very, very roughly, the idea of the proof is try to show that the, the curves tangent to the center produce a structure very similar to an anoso flow after blowing up, for instance. Okay, so that's, that's the, 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 the two words uh, uh, proof of, of theorem A. So you of wouldn't course. have your uh, branching situation, the proof will be easier. Yes. Yes, it's like uh, 100 page uh, shorter. Well, yeah, but you already have 200. So this, so this means that it will, <laughs> <laughs> it will be easier, but not much easier. OK, good. <laughs> but it's easier. It, it, yeah, it, it, it removes uh, a, lot of, a lot of parts, but Yes, it, it, it really simplifies a lot, but, uh, but I think, so the, the, the reason it simplifies a lot is that the fact that these curves merge has to do with global properties of the system. So if you, if you force these curves not to be merging, <laughs> then there, there is a lot of things that, that cannot happen and uh, which happen for partially hyperbolic systems. <clears throat> okay, so but, but this is not all lost because Burago and Ivanov produced a weaker structure, which is not so far. So from the geometric point of view, they construct something that are called branching foliations. So they, they take the center curves <clears throat> and they saturate, for instance, by stable manifolds, and they produce a co-dimension one structure that they call branching foliations which geometrically are very similar to foliations. Okay? The, 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 the information they give us about the manifold has many things in common, but they are more flexible because they can be preserved by the dynamics and not obstruct partial hyperbolism. So, so the, the, the true thing you need to understand to, to work with partially hyperbolic systems is this weaker structure, which has been... So it's, this is very similar as something that happened in the theory of anoso flow. So originally, people uh, like Novikov's theorems and Hefliger, they studied foliations with a lot of re transverse regularity. But whenever, when, when they started to try to use foliation theory to study anoso flows, they noticed that they needed to remove the assumptions on transverse regularity because anoso flows, do not have transverse regularity in the foliation. So they, they, they started to change the questions in foliation theory to, to really be careful about the transverse regularity and be, because even if you're looking at analytic and also flows, the regularity of the foliation they produce, because it's, a, it's an asymptotic construction, can be very bad. And so the, the, this, the, the fact that foliations were so useful to understand anosov flows pushed the study of foliations into the direction of, uh, of really taking care of the transfer regularity. And so in partial hyperbolicity, there's a, 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 an even huge gap. It's almost like a foliation, but leaves can merge. And you need to understand this if you, if you want to, to, to understand partially hyperbolic systems. But there is still some problem, even assuming this, because the, the, the key point of an anoso flow is that when we lift the anoso flow to the universal cover, 
all the curves tangent to the center are fixed by the lift to the universal code. And this is the key property that all the theory of Anoso flows makes use. The, 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 the first statement, so the, the, the first important statement of, uh, when understanding Anoso flows in the universal cover is that the space of orbits is uh, Hausdorff. And that uses very strongly that all curves are fixed by F, F, Psi t. And this, again, this fails for partially hyperbolic system. Partially hyperbolic system only preserve, so assuming that, that you have the, the foliation, if, if the, let's forget that we can have this problem, but the problem that, that F does not need to map a center leaf to itself, it can permute it, it's, it's there. And you cannot uh, go from one to the other. So if, if we could show that, that center curves are all fixed by a lift of F to the universal cover, it's not so hard to show that you can produce an anoso flow from, from it. So the, the true problem is that this uh, fails for partially hyperbolic system. So what's the strategy? to build an anoso flow in M from a partially hyperbolic system. And this is the, the idea I want to transmit, is to look for a different thing that, that is implied by the structure of an anoso flow. So the, the, and, and it's something that is less uh, immediate and less uh, clear, but it's really the place where partially hyperbolic systems and anoso flows have shown to, to to have a, something in common. And it's whenever you have an anoso flow in a three manifold, then you look, you look, as I said, if you, if you look at the stable direction, it integrates into a one dimensional foliation and then you can flow it, you can take it by the flow. And, and this gives you a foliation, a co dimension one foliation, as we said. And the, the point is, it's, it's not very hard to show that each leaf of this foliation can be uniformized simultaneously to be a hyperbolic plane. Okay, it's a, it's a hyperbolic surface. It's a surface with, with negative curvature. And the idea is that inside this weight stable leaf, then the orbits of the flow look like this. It's like, it's something called geodesic fans. Okay, it's like a, a every, every curve, if you, if you look at the, this leaf, as a hyperbolic disk, then all flow lines converge like this in the boundary. And so this is the, the more indirect structure that we need and we want to mimic to, to show that every partially hyperbolic system in a hyperbolic three manifold is, uh, produces an anoso flow, okay? So the, the idea is that we will look instead of of the leaves of the foliation, the weak stable foliation of the anoson flow, we will take a partially hyperbolic system and we will look at the leaves tangent to ES plus EC of this uh, branching foliation structure and try to show that these leaves can be uniformized as a hyperbolic disk. And then we also have a, 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 an internal foliation here, which is made of, of the intersection with the center and stable leaves. And we try to show that the, the structure of the leaves is something like this. And, and having that will allow to show that it's, uh, it admits an, uh, an anoso flow. So this kind of partially hyperbolic systems, we call them quasi geodesic partially hyperbolic system because we, sh we, are, we, we ask the center curves to be quasi geodesics inside the, the center stable and center unstable need. And with this uh, property, we are able to, to, to produce a structure that we call collapsed anoson flow, which in particular implies that the manifold supports an anoson flow. Okay, oh, so oh. this, this uh -huh. is the, the, the big structure of, of the proof. Sorry, so can you repeat? So you say for the anoson flow, you take the center stable, and these are uh, uh, the hyperbolic disk. Yes. And your leaf inside there are the center direction, which are nothing else than the geodesics. Yes. The, also, but they, so in a center stable leaf, the uh -huh. property is that all the center leaves 
converge to the same point. Same point. That Perfect. Uh -huh. So you do the same, and now you have the branch foliation that you were mentioning. Yes. So you have the centres, the, let's call one of the front centre stable branching. So first you prove that they are also, uh, they can be uniform, uniform, uniformized, uniformized yeah. to H2. Yes. And later you prove that the center direction is quasi geodesic. Yes, but yeah, and that, that has several steps because in principle, so you could have something like this. So you have the, the, the leaf, the center stable leaf and, in principle, the centers, as you go to infinity, the, the, the length is, is so it's already non-trivial to show that the, the curves have a limit. Mm -hmm. Then you need to show that the limit is not the same. Then you need to also show that the, the space of leaves uh, cannot have something like this. It's not, not house or and there, okay. there are a lot of, uh, of things. So, that... But there the is easy in a way to prove that uh, the center stable is going to be uh, uniformized uh, to the hyperbolic disk. Yes, that that is not so hard because uh. that, that, that that is so. The, the there is a result by Candle that uh, essentially uh, describes which foliations can be uniformized, and essentially you can show that. If you have a minimal foliation, for instance, in a in a manifold which is, which has enough uh, growth of fundamental groove, then it has mm -hmm. to be uh, by hyperbolic plates. Okay, and then you do a topological analysis, or which are the possibility of how your whether your center leaf is are inside they are fitting inside this uh, hyperbolic disk. Yeah, so essentially the, the, there is a, a, a two-way thing. So you, you have the F from M to M, and then you, you leave to universal cover. Mm -hmm. And so you have two possibilities. First, you analyze how F tilde uh, acts on the space of leaves. So let's let's uh, let's assume that the branching foliation were a foliation, and so you can you can quotient this, and this is a, a, a one-dimensional object, which mm -hmm. may not be Hausdorff. Okay, it's like a, so because it's a foliation, so you you can have some splitting like this. Mm -hmm. But it's a one-dimensional object, and so you have an action of a map in a one-dimensional object, and you also have the fundamental group of M acting here, and Using these properties, essentially you deduce that either all leaves are fixed by, by F tilde or the transfer structure is very easy. So the one dimensional object mm. is the reals. And so if it's the reals, then now you, you know that F tilde is kind of a translation here. And whenever it's a translation, you can plug in the, the asymptotic geometry of the manifold Okay. Because as you push up, the, the manifold has to shrink and, and make some, some structure transfer to this. And so we get some coarse information on the dynamics here. Okay. And that's the, the main point. So the, this is okay. a, a cartoon. And, and okay, so sh just to close, because I, I, I don't I want to talk about theorem B. Uh, and I, I want to point out that. So I wrote this very sh a short note that explained this kind of from scratch and in a result about the existence of an also flows in three manifolds. And there are many references there if, if someone wants to, to, to know more about this. Okay. But I, I will end here. Uh, thank you. And, and I, if anyone has any question, they are welcome. Excellent. I have a technical question. Can we, so the, these uh, slides that you shared, can we put them in the forum of the Congress? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Okay. Together with the video. Yes, yes. Okay. And in the survey that you are, you already have written on, uh, on the notice of the IMS, uh, is 
it's more general. It's not only describing the result. So you no, are, it's are, it's not even it doesn't arrive to this result. It's a, it's it's more from scratch. It doesn't. It, it's describing the, the it's a res, an old result by Margulis and Plant and Thurston that show that if you have an, a three manifold that admits an anosov flow, then the fundamental group has exponential growth. But then the, I also explain a little bit the results by Burago Ivanov and try to connect this and explain what are kind of the, the, the questions. It's a, it's a very, it's much more introductory, but it has references if, if one wishes to, to, to go further. Um, so you are dealing with this, uh, you are the expert now on partially hyperbolicity. Uh, what do you think that will be the meaningful questions uh, to be answered or to be considered in the topic? In dimension three? Yeah, yes. So well for, for me the, the the well the classification is 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 open and so it makes sense. I, I think I think that that this concept of collapse and as of flow should be something to to look at to see whether this is the the, the right notion to 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 characterize all systems but that's from the topological point of view then i think the 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 main question in general is to try to understand the the the, the one dimensional foliations the, the strong and stable foliation for instance and try to to see what's the 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 possible structure it has. It's related to this like uh, theorem by, by Radner in homogeneous dynamics, where the strong and stable is something that can be promoted and uh, described. And, and in partially hyperbolic systems, it's very, very challenging because you don't, you don't know how the transverse dynamics looks like. I think that that is something that we are now getting some tools to, to, to address. Um, a layman question. Uh, I saw uh, an interview that uh, Nino Gafure uh, had with you on the web, uh, where you mentioned that uh, you liked uh, the interaction between different fields and how your work interacted with things from algebra. And so an example of this interaction with algebra would be, for example, what you just mentioned as uh, the relation between the existence of an also flows and the growth of the by one or are there more yeah. examples of such things? Yeah, there are many group actions that appear here. I, 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 I hidden the, most of, uh, of what's going on, but essentially the, the the, the understanding of, of uh, fundamental groups of three manifolds acting in one dimensional objects is, is a very big field. And there are many, uh, many things that are, that have to do with uh, algebraic properties of the group having to do with how it can act on these one dimensional objects. But yeah, so the, the, the algebra here is, is not so big because it's, a, it's a really a, a group, a fundamental group of manifolds uh, acting on, on one dimensional objects. But in, in general, understanding partially hyperbolic systems has some relation to understanding group action on, on other manifolds because you, typically if you, if you want to understand a group action on a manifold, you, you, you have a lot of elements of this group. And so the, the way each one acts, it's important to understand how they relate and, and which kind of relations you can create between the, the, the elements. Thank you. So any other question? Even from the scratch. So it's a good opportunity uh, somebody have a totally unrelated question to the talk, but related to dynamic, probably Rafael can answer better than anyone. <laughs> so 
Okay, I don't know. It's the, uh, if I don't there are no questions, I will uh, stop the recording. Okay.